Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another interview series. My name is Meher from Newfoundland and Labrador. And today I have the privilege to interview Sheila Musgrove from Calgary, Alberta. Hi, Sheila. How are you doing? Great. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for being here. So Sheila started the tech recruitment in 2005 with an IKEA desk, a bargain website, and a computer monitor as big as fish tank. And tech has grown up into a thriving multi-million dollar organization with a strong reputation for finding stellar talent, all from Uber funky office with a disco ball and a gun. And Sheila has received numerous awards, including the Alberta Venture Ranking of Alberta's fastest, fastest growing companies and profit and Italian rank Canada's top 100 women entrepreneurs. She appeared on the list four times. And Sheila was recognized by Red Deer College as their Distinguished Alumnus of the Year. And she received the Global Influencer Award from the Universal's Women's Network for the global reach of Hired. And I met Sheila in Ottawa, where we had a conference where she was also talking about her book, Hired, which I highly recommend everyone to get it. We're going to talk about a few things from the book. And let's start dive in, Sheila. So my first question for you is, in terms of resume, we know that resume is very important. It's kind of a, uh, gives a opportunity for the job seeker to get an interview. That's the purpose of the resume. And we always tell them, customize your resume to the job that you're applying. From your experience and expertise, what should a resume include? Wonderful question. Thank you for having me. And thanks for the intro and introduction. So yeah, resumes, first of all, and I don't think you can see it on the, the behind me, 80% of resumes are rejected in 11 seconds. 11 seconds is all the time that you get. Mm -hmm. So I think it's also before we dive into resumes, what's important to know is what actually gets read in those 11 seconds, right? And so very briefly, it's company name and title company name and title only, start and end dates. When one position stops, ideally another one starts again. But if they don't, we'll make note and we'll cover gaps in an interview. And that's a whole other chapter in my book on how to cover gaps in your resumes because let's face it, life happens. So that's okay. So we'll look at start and end dates. We then will look at education and mm -hmm. professional development. Mm -hmm. If I'm looking for a specific degree, diploma, designation, my skin may actually start and stop with education. If you've got it, I'll continue on. If not, if you don't have it, the skim stops there. And then, yeah, so those are, are the initially mm -hmm. the first few things that get read. I'll then take a look. Are we located in the, in the same city? If I need us to be in the same city by area code at the top of your resume or by city, if you've noted, are we in the same city or proximity? And then lastly, I'll skim for numbers, percentages, and rankings. And mm -hmm. kudos to any of your viewers who have numbers, percentages, rankings on their resume, they will get read. And by the end of our time today, if you don't have numbers, percentages, rankings, I'll demonstrate and I'll show you how and why they're really important. So that's what doesn't get mm -hmm. read. Or, pardon me, what does get read in the mm -hmm. first 11 seconds. Now, you're probably thinking, well, that's a whole lot of things that don't get any attention. And you're right. So I think it's also important for your viewers to know what doesn't get any attention in those first 11 seconds, if at all. And some of these will surprise you. The first one is cover letters. Now, cover letters, you you attended my session in, in yeah. Ottawa, you know, I'm not a big fan of cover letters. Yes. Unless now here's the provision unless they're specifically requested, then a thousand percent do a cover letter. But in most cases, when you're uploading your resume to an applicant tracking system or an ATS system, that system is smart enough to know which is your resume and which is your cover letter. And it uploads them into two different parts of the system. So when a busy hiring manager or recruiter is skimming through resumes, they're only going down the resume tab. Mm -hmm. Quite often, very often, that inter the 
the cover letter tab will never get open. So by all means, if you feel that your resume or your application isn't complete without a, a cover letter, do it. But just know that it may never, ever get read. So important things like your name, your telephone number, your email address, make yeah. sure that those are also in your resume. Yeah. And lots of times they're, they're missed. Yeah. And so I also help a lot of international students and new immigrants. A yes. lot of times, maybe the job title, what's in their country, it's different than here. A lot of times, let's say even they have a master's degree, but they're not able to find jobs and they are doing survival jobs or yeah. they be part time because they are doing their master's. So what can we say to those people, like how they can customize their resume in that? Yeah, situation? is it the sure it can be different? You know what, uh, for all inter international students that I coach, the one piece of advice that I cringe that mm -hmm. is given out is just because your education is from a different country, take it off. Absolutely not. Your education always, always stays on. Mm -hmm. Even if you are looking for a survival job mm -hmm. that let's face it, I mean, it's a, a company would be really lucky to have someone who has a master's degree, whatever the discipline or an undergraduate degree. And if they're applying far below, there's their what they're they're capable of to get that first job in Canada just showcase what you are capable of. So I always, I, I'm always a fan of leave your international experience and education on your resume. Now you, you've mentioned as well, oh, just a couple of other things that don't get read, but just back to what doesn't get read here, the career summary. So the career summary, I'm not a fan. It can take up to the top quarter or third of the first page of your resume. Don't do it. You want as much of your education and or work history on the first page. Now, the problem with career summary is that everyone pours over thesaurus.com to pick, you know, the most lovely words or the buzzwords, team player, problem solving, leadership skills. Yeah, like I've read it on the last 3,800 resumes. So it tells me nothing and it doesn't mm -hmm. do. So get rid of it. Get rid of that career summary. The other problem with career summary is that often it includes some of your biggest career achievements, but they get overlooked. Two reasons. One, we don't actually expect to read anything interesting in a career summary. Again, it's just all those same words. Mm -hmm. And if you put successes in the summary, one, they may get missed. But two, I don't know which position they belong under. So the hiring manager is saying, oh, was, was this person successful 10 years ago, two years ago? We don't know when it was. So I'll share with you my resume formula in a few minutes. But you want to make sure that 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 you particularly for your international students or all 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 newcomers all job seekers use a target position now that's the in my opinion that's the only thing that should ever change on your resume mm -hmm. is what is your target position and it should be the exact title of the position you're applying on so that on purpose if you have a master's degree and you're applying for a survival job Put that job title because then the hiring manager knows, yes, on purpose, I have applied for that job. I didn't apply on that job in error. So it's just a little subtlety that says, okay, this person is applying on the right job. Yeah. So important to know, know that, you know, the other thing that doesn't get read, which is also surprising is all of those bullets. And in my book, I call them the mind numbing bullets, because they're they again, they don't tell me they tell me what your job is or was. Yeah. Sure, I can tell that by the job title, largely. Yeah. Yeah. So get rid of all of those bullets. And I'll tell you how to replace them in a second, but yeah. they don't get they don't get any attention. And then the last thing that doesn't get any attention is interest. And I just my job seeker blog I published today was the secret to getting interest read on your resume, make them interesting. Yeah. So use that section to <laughs> showcase some personality. Like, have you jumped out of an airplane? How many countries have you visited? What do they do? Forage mushrooms. Like, tell me something randomly interesting. about. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And that's usually the last part of the interview. And yeah. so it's kind of a nice way when, when you can surprise a hiring manager by saying, what? That's one of your interests. <laughs> that's fun. Or you may, it may be in alignment. So they'll use those sections. And of course, 
The two most important sections on your resume are, of course, career summary or career, pardon me, career history yeah. or professional history and education. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I can, can I share with you yeah. my two? So, so can, yeah. you, can, I share, can you share me? So we talked about what we can read, what's read, what's not read. So yes. the formula that you share in the book that I also highly recommend. Yeah. Get it, and we'll put it in in the down in the link. But yeah. what's the formula, in terms, especially in terms yes. of completion? Because a lot of times when I speak with you, I haven't done anything in my job. I haven't done. I was just a retailer. I was just an admin. What could I have done? So how can they yeah. translate those to accomplishment numbers and percentages? Perfect. So I'll just back up one step and I'll go through what step one. There, it's a two-step resume formula. Okay. I created the formula in my recruitment firm after interviewing thousands of candidates yes. who would come and and most people, of course, really struggle with interviews mm -hmm. and they also struggle with getting their resumes noticed. Yes. So I over the course of many years, I perfected my formula. And people kept saying to me, where is this written? Like, this is magic. And so I said, well, it's not. It's in my head. Yeah. So yeah. that's why I wrote my book seven years ago. So here's the formula. Mm -hmm. Step one, in one to three sentences, not bullets, one to three sentences, right. answer the questions. What level did you report to by title? Very briefly, succinctly, tell me what is or was your job? What's your scope? meaning territory or geography, and how many other people did the same job. So very, very briefly, what level did you report to? What is or was your job succinctly? How many other people did what you did? And what was your what was your scope? That's step one. Mm -hmm. Now, that also has an added benefit for interviews, which I will talk about interviews in, yes. in a minute. But that's step one, one to three sentences. Then step two is the magic. It is. It's all yeah. about the results. So yeah. write on your resume, key successes, key achievements, whatever the words are that resonate with you, mm -hmm. bold, underline. And this is a, where it is okay to have bullets on your resume. So before you delete the functional bullet that describes your job duty, ask yourself, is there something I could measure? So how big, how much, how many? So you raised a, a really good good point. In my book, I covered nine different disciplines, whether you're new to the country, new to your career, in a real retail job, administrative job, I guarantee there's always something to measure. So here are some examples. Let's say you are in your receptionist, you're in a receptionist job, one of your bullets will be answered all incoming phone calls. Right. Yes. So I don't know as a hiring manager, do you answer one call a day or a hundred? Yes. So what rather a key achievement could be answered 75 plus incoming calls per day, successfully transferred see, or seamlessly transferred to 25 memorized extensions. Wow. Right. That's yeah. like, that's like, okay, that's different. Yeah. It would about if it if it's retail, let's say you are working in in retail, let's say a serving position that you that rather than saying I'm a server, yeah, respond to guests, la la la. What you could say is I my high, highest I successfully handle 80 to 150 clients per shift with an average upsell rate of 10%. Mm. Yeah. Or you know, so think about rather than just looking at your bullets, think about what is it that you actually do? Because and I loved your expression like on the receptionist, like you go from answering incoming phone calls to making it a wow. And that's what we're after, because if you dig far enough into anyone's background, any of our backgrounds, you will find wow. You yeah. absolutely will. I always tell my students that instead of saying that work in teams, you can say work in diverse team of diverse 10 people teams with different backgrounds and achieve the goals successfully by 50%. Instead of yes. work with a team and achieve goal, you can always right. 10% diverse background and those are. So those are great tips, Sheila. Thank you very much. And again, yeah. for the audience watching or listening for the first time, I'm going to ask Sheila a couple of questions and I'm going yeah. to ask them on a daily basis, kind of a journey with us. So like, comment and share the videos and tune in next time for another great question with Sheila. Mm -hmm.